What's going on YouTube? Dave here from SignalWarn.com. Hey, it's been a while. Uh, life happened and then it kept happening. And finally I'm back. So after a month or so, I've got another script here for you. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about efficient way to gather information on your Active Directory infrastructure. And we're basically going to include all of this information here that you see in the, uh, the comments of the script. So it's kind of a lengthy script. I have it broken down into regions. Well, first, before I get started, let me tell you, this is how uh, I was actually trying to do this for myself. Ran across this script in the script center. Used it. It worked beautifully. Total overkill for what I was trying to do. It's much more complicated than what I've done here. I think uh, Zachary Lober, hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think that script is about 2,000 lines of code. And I have, you know, four or five hundred, including spaces and everything. So what I have here is not an exact replica of what he he did uh, in his audit script. I just simplify the process for my own, my own to meet my own needs, basically. So to get started here, I have this thing broken up into regions, so it's just easier to go through, and you can. In the ISE, you just click the little plus button here, and it'll show you the contents of each region. So the first piece here is we're just setting variables. Uh, we're going to use the today's date to create a, uh, a file name. We're going to put it on the desktop. And some of these other variables here are reusable pieces or reused pieces of code used throughout the script. So I uh, basically just set them to variables. This is, these are absolutely optional. You could use the full uh, command line name there. So that's the first region, or the first region of the variables. So forest information. This is basically what we're looking for on the forest information. The root domain, the functional level, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I won't kind of go through each little piece of this code. I have it commented pretty, pretty well. Uh, one thing here... All this is output to HTML, so it's a little clunky, I would say, the way I did this, creating the HTML. So when you see a, uh, a command here in parentheses and then joining it, we're basically taking each of these objects and joining them uh, with a pipe. And you'll, it'll make more sense once I show you the output. It's basically just to uh, make it a little more user-friendly as far as reading it goes. So in here, we're basically creating another uh, custom object in order to make the HTML look presentable. Uh, it's not fancy HTML by any means. It's very basic. Uh, domain information, again, functional level. Net BIOS name is pretty much all I could look for on the domain. And all of the FISMO roles here using two commandlets. Get 80 forest and get 80 domain. Some domain controller information. What domain it's a member of, the name, the IP address, uh, whether it's a global catalog server, read only, etc. You'll see the, the output there at the end. DNS information. Uh, to basically print out all your primary zones, uh, your domain or DNS server, NS records, your MX records if there are any. Uh, any kind of forwarding information. This is just all information that I like to look at if I'm rolling in on a new uh, environment. Basically just gives you an idea of what's going on in the environment. DHCP information, if it is uh, installed or if there is a DHCP server found in uh, on the domain. Some site information. So these are your sites that are in AD Sites and Services. And then down here, you're getting the inter-site transport links. Basically, what replication looks like in between sites. GPO information, just some basic GPO information. Uh, I'll always like to know when I'm rolling in on a new network who has privileged accounts. So this will give you the members of the domain admins, enterprise admins, schema admins. You could obviously add other groups here if you wanted to just copy one of these lines and give it another name exchange server information so I'm basically all I'm concerned with is who is an exchange organization manager 
who has those uh, that RBAC role. And then I would, this is just getting server information, how many Exchange servers are in the environment. And some user information, just looking for users with passwords set to never expire for obvious reasons. And the last region here is the HTML output. So that's going to be the header or the title of the file. All of this information is the CSS styling for the tables and the font. So you can change this to change the colors and background and all that kind of information. And then this is basically the nuts and bolts of creating the uh, HTML file. This is about the simplest way that I could figure out how to do it. Uh, in Zach's script above, again, he gets into this much more in-depth and more complicated uh, than I did here. I did this specifically to be as simple as possible. And then the last little piece here is uh, you're basically just opening the HTML file in whatever browser. So this, like I said, this is absolutely optional. You can take this out if you want to take it out. So let's run this thing real quick. And there's the output. So this is the forest we're looking at. And then just all the forest information, basically. So this gives me my FISMO roles, uh, domain controller information, all my primary zones, these are the forwarders I have set to Google's, and I think these are Comcast. Oh, and the join thing I was mentioning before. So these are, this is, you see the pipe here. So essentially this default IP site link has these two different sites that are included. So if you don't join them in pipe, it's going to look like one big, long mess here. You're, you're going to struggle to discern where the first one ends and where the second one begins. So that's why you just join them on the pipe. And that's basically it. So that's it in a nutshell. Appreciate you watching. If you have uh, any input, there'll be a little more detailed uh, article on the website. And as always, you can download the code there for nothing. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you found this useful. And I'll see you next time.